This is Cleo. I am an editor at The Dial Press and this is Random Pantry. Um, I'm going to be joined shortly by Marissa Mullen, who is the founder of That Cheese Plate. So let's get Marissa on the video. All right, looks like she's uh, heading on. And if you uh, want to comment where you're from. And oh, hello. 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 Happy How's Christmas. it going? Thank you. I have it right here. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I also have some nice flowers. I was deciding to put them in the shot or not, but Amazing. just leave them right there. Yeah. We'll have them for our virtual garnish. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So how are you celebrating your pub day? Oh, well, last night my friend came over. Um, she's been like my quarantine buddy and we drank champagne and stayed up till midnight, which Amazing. was really fun. Um, this morning I was not feeling so great. So I haven't really been drinking that much during <laughs> quarantine. And I was like, oh, of course today. Um, but yeah, I mean, I since I kind of run my whole Instagram and everything myself, it's just been a lot of um, just updating and responding to comments and seeing everyone who have, gotten the book today which is amazing to see and um yeah it, it's crazy because I feel like it's definitely not what I expected to be a launch party day because yeah. of the circumstances um originally like we had planned this like massive party on a rooftop at the Hoxton with like all this stuff going on but I realized that like being right now here at my parents house is kind of like exactly where I want to be for this because they taught me everything I know about cheese and entertaining. And it's just kind of like a really nice full circle moment to be here. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the idea of, even though obviously the world has changed so much, like you, you're, you're home and you're where it all started. Um, for those of you just tuning in, this is um, Cleo. I'm an editor at Dial Press. And this is Marissa Mullen, who is the founder of the viral Instagram sensation, That Cheese Plate. And her book, That Cheese Plate Will Change Your Life, um, is out today. So we're celebrating her publication. Um, I know a lot of people, obviously, are huge fans of your Instagram. And it's just the most simple yet genius idea, um, both that cheese plate and cheese by numbers, which is actually the method that you use to build these cheese plates. Um, full disclosure, I made one for lunch from my pantry ingredients. I'm very proud. Um, but I'd love to hear a little more um, about kind of your inspiration behind that cheese plate and how you built the brand. Yeah, so it was a long process. Um, and it was always just something that really felt authentic and um I don't know I just I love cheese my entire life like it was always my favorite food cheese and french fries those are like my two my top two and uh my parents are avid entertainers so growing up um my mom would just be like hey Marissa here make make a crudite plate make a cheese plate for a company coming over and my background and interests were always in um photography and visual art um I actually studied music industry in college so I was in the entertainment business and making cheese plates for me was just this fun way to express my creativity at a young age. And I didn't really know at the time that this was something that um, was this creative zone that I kind of would zone out in and time would almost like slip away when I was making these cheese plates until a little later in life. Um, and so I went to college and my friends and I would have wine and cheese parties. Um, we would buy like really cheap cheddar and some meat from the store to make yeah. ourselves feel a little fancy. College. Yeah. <laughs> and I would like throw a rosemary sprig on there and be like, oh, look, we got our little cheese yeah. plate. And um, I was very into social media my whole life, like working in the music industry. I was always kind of um, on like Tumblr, MySpace, like just keeping up with, with the social media trends as they happened. And I wanted to start an Instagram account to document my cheese plates because they are so vibrant and pretty and nothing existed at the time. So um, I made the Instagram account that cheese plate in 2013. Oh, looks like we're having a little bit of an inter- uh, Let's uh, get Marissa back on the line. All right. All right, just uh, waiting for her to join. No tech issues are. Uh, Sorry, my oh, Wi-Fi here is so bad. 
I mean, it's I been like awful. That's the story of all of our lives at the moment. Is I know. Every time I do these like live streams or happy hours, I have to have my entire family shut their devices off because it's so weak. <laughs> um, but anyways, as I was saying, yeah. Um, so yeah, I made this Instagram account in 2013 and almost just like kept up with it um, as I made cheese plates. So I'd make plates with friends. Um, I'd come home and make cheese plates with my family and I would just document them on this Instagram and it took a very long time to grow because it wasn't really something I ever thought would be a job. It was just almost this place for me to express my creativity and post these cheese plates I was making. Um, but as I started to get some followers, I started studying a lot more um, like in depth into the cheese world to learn about pairings, to learn about different cheeses, to figure out what actually works well together besides the aesthetics on the plate. And it was really fun to befriend cheesemongers and to go to dairy farms and just to kind of dive into this world of cheese um, alongside my world working in the music industry. So when I graduated college, I got a job at The Late Show with Stephen Colbert working for John Batiste, who's the band leader on the show. He's an amazing jazz musician. And it was a crazy job. I it was a crazy job. I mean, I loved it, but it was like we worked like 12 hour days average. Um, and for a few years, I did that for four years, I was kind of on like the brink of burnout, which I feel like a lot of people have yeah. felt in their life. <laughs> I've definitely been there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's nice kind of now because we all get to work from home. So I think it is a really nice break at the moment. But at the time I was, um, I was getting to that point and the one thing that calmed me down was making a cheese plate and it went hand in hand with this community that I was growing, but also this activity that really made me feel connected to myself. Um, on the weekends when I had time off, my Brooklyn apartment has a lot of natural light. So I would put a soothing playlist on, I would start cutting vegetables. I wouldn't be looking at my phone and it really was this like grounding activity that, made me feel just I don't know it, it made time slip away it's like painting with watercolors or gardening it's like it was that activity for me um so that being said I started making a lot more cheese plates <laughs> and started posting more cheese plates yeah. just because it was um it went hand in hand me discovering that this was like my form of self-care went hand in hand with the Instagram account growing at the same time um and another thing with that cheese plate when I started it was in the back of my mind, I always wanted to write a book because I cheese plates are so beautiful. And I'm like, it belongs in a book. Like, let's just look at that. It's so vibrant and pretty. Belongs yeah. in a book. Um, but I didn't know where to start because, again, I was working in music. I had no idea how the publishing world worked. Um, it's a crazy world. It's very different. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in 2017, I asked a friend to actually just how she got started and she introduced me to her um, book agent who ended up we put together a proposal we pitched it out to 25 publishers and every single person rejected it and the concept of the book was cheese by numbers so that's the method the cheese by numbers method which is the book that you see now that was the original concept and this method was something that I I guess I'm just a very like compartmentalized person <laughs> when it comes to like creating visual art and stuff and so yeah. when I made cheese plates I realized that I was building them in the same order every time and this was a well, six step process where step one is cheese step two is meat step three is produce step four is crunch step five is dip step six is garnish you put it all together you make a beautiful cheese plate and it, it took something that was so uh intimidating at first to look at and break it down and make it super easy for everyone to understand so after I got rejected from all these publishers, um, it was disappointing, but I was in this position at my job where I couldn't leave to write a book anyways. It just wasn't the right time. Yeah. But my, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make an Instagram for Cheese by Numbers because I wanna save yeah. the name because I think it's a good idea. So I made Cheese by Numbers an Instagram, this is in 2018. Kept on just doing my thing and used that as like the method account. Um, so I started posting these photo slides I call Swipe to Build. So every photo is a step in the process of cheese by numbers which again made it super easy for people to understand and, and in I november to, like anyone who's watching and hasn't tried this method out yet it is so simple and just guarantees like the most beautiful plate like you you just 
make it so easy. And I, I think everyone is gonna have so much fun. Yeah, it's like, it's just so different. Um, it's like your mind works in a different way when you can really break it down and sig mm -hmm. like kind of take all these little elements and focus on them one at a time. And then at the end, it kind of turns into this beautiful painting with cheese. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then in November of, of 2018, um, everything started to kind of skyrocket. I got an email from the Rachel Ray show and they said that they found cheese by numbers. And at the time I was like, not that cheese plate, which is like, the original account They're like no cheese by numbers um well, we want you on for that and we can't talk about two instagram accounts because it's too confusing and i'm like oh why did i make cheese by numbers why did i make two accounts um so i went on the show we talked about cheese by numbers and that kind of blew up overnight so now i did have two cheese instagrams that i had to really make sure that they merged um which then after that uh, the Today Show saw Rachel Ray, and then I did a Vox article, and then we were introduced because I think you saw the Today Show or something. I saw, yeah. So this is you know, this is where the dial, and then this is where Cleo in. comes in, uh, and it's yeah. crazy because like after being rejected by all these publishers, like having a book wasn't really on my mind. Um, it wasn't at the forefront of my mind yeah. because I just felt a little defeated from the process. Yeah. Um, but it was this point in my career in music where I was ready to kind of take the next step either in another job in music or the unknown. Um, just because I was there for four years as a personal assistant, it just wasn't really, um, I just didn't really feel, feel it anymore. So when you did reach out, it actually was this like serendipitous moment where I was already thinking about leaving my job and was like gung ho, ready to write a book, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so when uh when i reached out to you um and again for for those who are just joining um i'm cleo and i'm an editor at dial press and this is marissa mullen who's the founder of that cheese plate um her book is out today and um this book is a fantastic guide to crafting these beautiful but very simple cheese plates and basically something that really struck me um, and what caused me to reach out to Marissa and say, hey, do you want to write a book? Is um, actually your interview in Vox where you talked about cheese plates being self-care. Um, because, I mean, I am a lifelong cheese lover and I'm someone who's always sort of used food as a way to like ground myself um you know after a long day at work there's something very de-stressing about using your hands to cook something and, and not really have to think a lot and so i immediately connected with that idea and that's something you talk a lot about in the book um, and you have this very interesting awesome definition of self-care um, so i'd love to hear you talk a little about that too yeah, I mean, self care is such a loaded term. And there's so much history behind it, first of all, but then the wellness industry came in, and there's another meaning behind it. And there's just self care, I feel like has a million meaning meanings nowadays. Um, what self care for me originally felt like was this temporary fix of like, put on a face mask, and you'll feel great or like drink a green juice and everything will be fine. Um, in the book, we have like a funny sentence. It's like, if you're like in a bathtub full of flower yeah. petals, <laughs> everything will be perfect. Yeah. Um, and that was just always tied to this feeling of a temporary fix. It wasn't something that you can really dig deep inside and figure out, oh, what actually makes me happy? What actually is this activity that connects me to my creative zone to make me feel nourished to make everything feel like it's time is slipping away or like it doesn't exist because you're just in this space. And for me, I feel like that is self care when you can find this, you know, a practice, like it could be yoga, it could be gardening, it could be whatever it is, yeah. but kind of this sacred ritual and practice that really makes you feel connected to yourself and can be a de-stressing activity. And for me, it was making cheese plates. Mm -hmm. Um, I think focusing on each element of the plate really, and that's what we talk about in the book, we break it down by the cheese by numbers. So chapter one is about cheese, chapter two is meat, chapter three is produce and so on. In each chapter, we kind of dive into how each element of the cheese plate can be this form of a creative self care. So like in the cheese chapter, we talk about how cheese can, cutting cheese can be therapeutic and how it can be <laughs> almost like an ASMR video, of just yeah. like a nice, <laughs> nice cuts. <laughs> and then, uh, 
in the meat chapter, I have my term that I coined called the salami river, which refers to meat flowing down the center of a cheese plate. And we say like the river is, it's the balance amidst the chaos, you know, it separates the it's produce meditative. on the plate. It's meditative and folding your salami too and putting it in this nice curving shape. It, it's really nice to look at. It's a really great focal point. And salami takes kind of a long time to fold. So it really makes you stop and yeah. stop and savor the present moment. Yeah. Um, and then produce too, like produce is my favorite because it's so colorful. Um, and so being able to cut this produce and put it around the plate, I, I call it painting with produce because that's when you can really add in like the bright, vibrant colors. Um, so yeah, and then, I mean, the the crunch with our crackers, always always a necessary vehicle. Oh, yeah, We honey. love dips, I love honey, yeah. honey and cheese <laughs> together. Um, but then the garnish is like kind of my favorite part because it's kind of what sets that cheese plate, my cheese plates apart from um, many other food items out there is I love garnishing. And I feel like I actually have an amazing quote in here um, from Will Gadara, who is the owner was the owner of 11 Madison Park, which is like one of the best restaurants in the world. Um, he was so gracious to give me this quote, but I'm just going to read it real quick because I feel like it really connects to um, just the idea of garnish. But he says, in our restaurants, our chief focus is the graciousness of our service and the deliciousness of our food. But I'd, remiss, I'd be remiss not to acknowledge the importance of aesthetics, whether it's the way the room makes you feel when you step through the doors or the way food looks on the plate when it's placed in front of you. The first impression of any dish happens when you look at it. The more thoughtfully it's presented, the more likely you'll be able to enjoy that first bite. So put a little energy into not only what you're serving, but how you're serving it. It goes a long way. And it's true. It's like, I think being able to put... Um, a flower on a cheese plate, an edible flower. It just makes it pop and it gives you that kind of, I don't know, it just ties everything together really nicely. Yeah, I mean, that's so much of your Instagram is just making people smile with these really bright, really beautiful creations. Um, I mean, I have so many favorites in the book, uh, but like, I mean, look at just, this is that cheese Oh yes, the plate. cheese party plate, I mean, that's a good one. These plates are so gorgeous and, and you have so many different seasonal plates and plates centered around certain ingredients, certain types of cheese. Where do you find the inspiration to come up with all of these different, absolutely gorgeous <laughs> plates and cheese? I don't know. Like it, it just, it's funny. I'm inspired by a lot of different things. Um, I'm inspired by seasons, definitely. It's so like mm -hmm. seasonal produce. So in the summertime using fresh figs and using, um, like very fresh, you know, fresh tomatoes, anything that's in season at the time or in the winter using dried fruits or nuts and kind of more of like a harvest feel. Yeah. So definitely tying into seasonality. Color is big for me too. Um, I love doing an array of color, but also um, color blocking sometimes like the fresh greens plate in this book is like all vibrant green, which is really fun. Um, and then just random things like taking my hobbies from all... <laughs> elements of my life and putting them on a cheese plate like I I did a in the book we have astrology cheese pairing oh, yeah so a That's cheese pairing for your star sign yeah. <laughs> and um I love astrology and I realized that cheese and people they kind of connect you know it's like a type of cheese has a personality so does a person a person can have a horoscope that describes a personality it can connect in some way um so like that inspires me but yeah, I think I just kind of try to think of like a specific occasion, time of year, color scheme. Um, this book has a lot of, I mean, there's like plates for everything. I mean, this one I just opened up to. This is like that picnic plate. Oh, yeah. Love that one. Picnic to go plate. So it's like, what can we make in a little Tupperware container that you can take to the park? It's perfect. Um but yeah, I don't know. I think in the book writing process, I had this crazy, I basically went into my bedroom and like taped up all of the photos <laughs> on my wall and was like, okay, what am I missing? Okay, maybe we need something more for winter. Oh, maybe we should do like something that's more summery or oh, like how about a Valentine's Day plate? That'll work too. And just kind of like going through the year and picking out these items and elements that represent mm -hmm. um different cuisines, different regions. Like we have the Italian countryside plate. I have the J'adore fromage plate tying into the European influences of cheese because it's, that's where it really started. Um, 
so yeah, a lot of different things. But um, I, I think about the book Big Magic a lot by uh, Elizabeth that Gilbert. Such a fantastic book. It's like feeling that, just waking up and feeling that spark of inspiration and either acting upon it or letting it pass on to someone else. Like with the cheese plates, I feel like I wake up and I'm like, I'm gonna do that today. And then I just kind of yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and just a reminder as well for anyone tuning in, if you have any questions for Marissa, please put them in the comments, put them in the question box. Um, I also wanted to mention, because I think this might surprise people who buy the book, um, that you, the entire book was shot on your iPhone. Um, yes. <laughs> you did not use a professional camera or, you know, a rig or anything like you just completely did this all on your own on your phone and then obviously Sarah Valenci did the incredible illustrations to accompany that but um, do you have any tips for anyone out there <laughs> looking to make their food photos pop on on the gram yeah I mean it was a it was an interesting choice we made because I so my background is in photography and I have cameras that would have probably captured clearer photos on the iPhone, but these turned out pretty good. I'm like, I don't know. Um, but that being said, I take all of my photos on my Instagram with my iPhone. I love the ability to just edit them right then and there on my phone, post it, you know, you don't have to upload it to Photoshop and it just, it takes away that extra step. Um, and when I found out that the iPhone had high enough quality photos to be put in a book, I was like, all right, here we go, let's yeah. do it. Um, so yeah, I photographed, I food styled the entire book on my own in my Brooklyn apartment, tiny space uh, on my white kitchen table. I also had a white poster board that I used a lot of the time as backdrop. Um, I also didn't use a tripod, which next time I feel like maybe I should, but I literally just lined up my phone every single time, like right here. <laughs> and it somehow worked. Um, but yeah, I think with, the way I take photos with my phone is um, you always wanna have a, neutral backdrop. So a backdrop that isn't too patterned. So white tablecloth. I actually, um, I bought these, I have one over there, but for my workshops, I bought these like fake marble backdrops that you can roll up and take with you. This is a genius move. Marissa, it's amazing. Photos. Wait, I'm going to grab it. Hold on. I love your marble countertops. Like I'm so jealous. My countertops are just so plain and boring. And it turned out that this was wallpaper or check this out that so just it, it looks exactly like marble it's <laughs> and yeah, then the back side is black marble yeah so I use these in all of my That's workshops um it's so fun because wherever you are you can have a fancy countertop yeah Amazon exactly. it's great um but yeah so you want to have a nice backdrop um I always like to take my photos in indirect natural sunlight so this lighting right here is great um you don't want the sunlight coming in and causing a shadow, unless that's kind of the style that you want, which also looks nice sometimes. Yeah. But with my photos, I like to do indirect natural light, um, probably like around the afternoon has like a nice little like haze to it, which the afternoon light, I feel like for me is my favorite. Um, and then I'll edit my photos in a variety of apps. So there's like, in, or there's um, Visco Cam. There's a new one called Foodie that I really like, which is oh, I specifically love for food. Foodie is great. Yeah, I've been using Foodie a lot. So much. <laughs> it's so great. Um, for this book, all of the photos are edited in Visco Cam. Thanks. Yeah. The Visco girl, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's uh, like editing your photos. You don't want to go overboard. Just like do a little bit of brightness, a little bit of contrast, tiny bit of saturation, and you're good to go. Because the cheese plate itself has so much color and so much vibrance to it that if you capture it in the nice light, it just kind of shines on its own. Yeah. Well, we have an, an interesting question here from Desi Cupcakes asking, what gave you the leap of faith to transition, you know, from this being your side hustle, quote unquote, to um, this being your full-time job as a, I guess, a cheese influencer? <laughs> cheese influencer. <laughs> as people um, say. <laughs> yes, not self-proclaimed. <laughs> people yeah. just called me that. Um, a variety of things. I think, like I mentioned earlier, feeling kind of stuck in my job and um, knowing that it wasn't sustainable because of how much I was working and how close I was to feeling burnt out. Yeah. Um, 
that was a big factor weighing on me to leave that job anyways to go into something else. Um, but I also, after Rachel Ray and the Today Show, like feeling this momentum of that cheese plate growing and never really feeling this, like, I don't know, ability to leave the job because I, it's not like I didn't trust that cheese plate, but I just like didn't know where it would go and didn't, wasn't sure if it could be a sustainable business. Yeah. Um, but being able to kind of see it grow like that and plan out like a year ahead once I signed with you guys at the book, being able to have a deadline and be like, okay, well, now I have this project. I'm very like project focused. Mm -hmm. Like if someone gives yeah. me a deadline, I'm like, great, I'll get it done by <laughs> that day. Um, that's just how I've always been. And so I wouldn't have quit my job if I didn't have something that I had to finish and complete at a specific date. So being able to say, oh, hey, September 1st, you have to deliver everything for the book. I was like, all right, well, this is my job now and I'm going to get it done. Yeah, and, and Which is kind of there. why we got it done that's so quickly. <laughs> great news for me that Marissa is the most deadline oriented person I've ever met. And I love it. <laughs> I'm just crazy. Like, no, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was nuts because I signed the book deal, I think, May 6th. Yeah, May 6th, 2019. Um, we delivered everything. I delivered all the photos to you guys by September. Illustrations were done by November. And then and here and then it is. put it into a book. And yeah. then here it is. Yeah. And now it's out. Yeah. It's great. It's really exciting. Well, last question before we wrap up. Um, lightning round. Top three cheeses that you could eat for the rest of your life. Oh, this is so hard. Everyone loves to ask this question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, I love all cheeses. Yeah. Okay. Number one, I'm going to say like, types of cheese to keep mm -hmm. it yeah um yeah so number one my all-time favorite type of cheese is a soft ripened ash ripened goat cheese mm -hmm. so this is like the center of the cheese is like a fresh chev and then the outer layer is like a creamy amazing just gooiness it's so good it's great paired with like fig jam or something like that mm -hmm. um vermont creamery makes really great styles of this um one favorite is sophia from capriol farms uh, in the Midwest, but beautiful type of cheese. Humboldt Fog is a popular one of this if that's for people um, who aren't familiar with cheese brands. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is definitely like an aged Gouda or like an Alpine style cheese, like an aged Gruyere that has like the terracine crystals in it. It's like a little crunch. Yeah. Those, those are my favorite. Um, and then number three is just probably like a really creamy brie or camembert, okay. creamy camembert. Yeah, I can just like eat that forever. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I love all cheese. <laughs> oh my goodness, I know camembert. I think is definitely in my my top three. Like camembert, camembert on like a fresh baguette, mm -hmm. or horrible. like a like a seedy cracker. You know? Ooh, oh yeah, so good. Um, well, anyway, that is all the time we have, unfortunately. Um, but. I hope you're all very hungry now and yeah, let's go make some cheese plates. <laughs> yeah, go make some cheese plates and congrats again, Marissa, on that Yay! cheese plate will change your life. Um, Thank go you. Get some coffee. It's out today um, at, you know, your local indie online everywhere. If you're international, you can buy it at the book depository online and, you, can. you know, just keep sharing those beautiful photos of your cheese creations, um, you know, tag dial press, tag that cheese plate. And, you know, we're just so excited to, to be spreading the cheesy goodness. <laughs> spreading the cheesy love. And yes. uh, on Friday, I'm doing a book launch party celebration right here on Instagram on my page um, at 8 p.m. So if you want to join in on that, feel free. We're going to be making yeah. some cheese plates and Everyone. having a fun time. <laughs> Tune in. I'll be there. Um, yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks so awesome. much, Marissa. And thank you, thank everyone, you, for Cleo. joining. Thank you for your questions and comments. And yeah, I'm gonna go eat some cheese now. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna make a a good cheese plate to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Oh, congrats again, Marissa. Thank you. You're the best. You're the best. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>